Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to. My name is Silky Feather and you can call me Silky. Kevin's got some more info. Let's take a listen. Kevin here with a big update from the Federal Reserve. First, I'm going to go through their three scenarios and expectations. Then number two, I'm going to go through inflation. And then third, I'm going to go through my plan, which I'll keep that part brief. By the way, the price for the YouTube course, Make Money From Home, does go up slightly before it releases in a few days. So use that coupon code Larry and check out that link down below. Fed Reserve Bank President of Chicago, one of the head guys at the Federal Reserve, led by Jerome Powell, has some big updates for us today. First, the Fed gave us three scenarios that might play out. Number one, Mr. Evans believes that in the first scenario, this is their sort of optimistic, hopeful scenario, the virus will be contained, we'll see some flare-ups, but unemployment will go down to around 9.5% this year, then down to 6.5% in 2021 and 5.5% in 2022. This is really important, these numbers, even though they might seem abstract, what I want you to remember is this. This is the Sparks note, Spark note version, okay? <laughs> Mr. Evans sees the economy at being under better footing once unemployment is below 6%. In his opinion, above 6% unemployment, we're still in recessionary territory, even though that's not technically how recessions are defined. He looks at unemployment. So keep that 6% figure in mind. And he doesn't think we're going to go under 6% until the start, like January of 2022, which means in this scenario, their base case optimistic scenario, we're literally going to have a crawling economy for at least the next 18 months. And obviously that's the total economy that we're talking about. So Tesla might skyrocket, but the total economy might be sluggish for the next 18 months. Scenario number two, and this is option two, virus cases slow, and then we reopen schools, but we do get cases spiking at some schools. In this kind of scenario where we have less of a control over the virus, he believes that adults are going to be less productive. And remember, gross domestic product is literally the sum of everybody's transactions in the economy, which means when children are sick and they go home, or when schools get shut down because there's an incident at a school, like a spike in cases or whatever, they shut the school down, then parents go home, child care providers can't really teach, workers, that is parents, can't go to work, and so worker or parent productivity goes down, their mental health goes down, and both of those together end up having a really big negative effect on the economy. So schools reopening is actually a big piece to getting back to normal. And that's the challenge because it has to be done safely. In scenario number two, Mr. Evans believes that we'll be in recessionary territory throughout all of 2022, which is basically another two and a half years of a recessionary and cautious market. And when we have this recessionary market, it means businesses are more careful, they spend less, people spend less money, people save more, debt hurts people more, right? Then, option number three, scenario number three, this would be the worst case scenario in his opinion, at least the short term worst case scenario, because it could be even worse. Uh, they see a potential second wave. And a second wave would skyrocket unemployment again, and we already know that unemployment is like there, uh uh, no, no, that's bad. Mr. Evans thinks that we'll actually, in his opinion, right now, as long as we get more stimulus passed, he thinks that we're going to be seeing a mix of scenario one and two, and hopefully not a second wave, hopefully not a scenario number three. If we see a mix of one and two, we're still going to be in the sluggish economy until somewhere between January and the end of 2022. That's, again, that's like two years of this crap. That's insane. All right. Now, in order to get scenario one slash two to happen, Mr. Evans goes as far as saying that it is, quote, absolutely critical that we get the virus under control and we get the proper fiscal support. He says the proper fiscal support, which means Congress, is critical for us getting through this pandemic in a scenario one or scenario two, which are the better options. He's bluntly saying, if Congress doesn't get their act together, we'll have a second wave and we'll see a worst case economic fallout. He already says he's seeing what he calls 
aggregate, aggregate, I can't even say it right, aggregate demand trouble brewing with the expiration of relief policies. Now that's really fancy, but here's how they measure aggregate demand trouble brewing. They use mobility data. Mobility data is like all your phones, they, they generally they track where you are, whether you like it or not, and it's kind of creepy. Now, they don't specifically uh, see whose phone is where. They can look at sort of dots on a map and see, oh, look at all these people at the mall or not at the mall, and then compare that to next month or last month. But the New York Times did a study on this, and they're like, are you serious? Let's assume there are four dots in a certain house at an address, and then we follow those dots to the airport. Hmm, I wonder whose dot that is. Well, it's probably one of the dots, a.k.a. one of the people who lives at that home address. Anyway, the government's tracking this. <laughs> Back door, right? Oh, it's nuts. It's totally nuts. But anyway, he says, if we don't get additional TPP funding, additional unemployment benefits, and protections like the eviction protections, then this will be, quote, very costly for the economy, individuals, households, and people. He further said that, I think at the end of this, at the moment, that real fiscal policy needs to be addressing this. AKA, at the end of the day, Congress needs to get off their butt and help if we have any hope of seeing a scenario one or two. And if they don't, then it's probably second wave scenario three, because Congress is in charge of providing the proper health guidance, the proper funding for health guidance to be actually be operational and effective, and the proper stimulus to help people who need help. Especially, he says, since many essential workers are lower paid workers. He personally believes that we'll see this scenario one and two, somewhere in between there. But he says the data is already pointing to a potential scenario three if Congress does not act. And that's really bad when somebody at the Federal Reserve is saying, oh, it looks like we're heading towards a second wave if Congress doesn't act. That's not good. All right, now let's talk about inflation. I'm going to keep this really simple because it can get complicated very fast and I don't like complicated. I just want simple. Keep it simple. <laughs> Here's the thing. The Fed usually wants to keep inflation at 2%. Well, we're basically deflating right now. <coughs> we're having what they call disinflation, which is like inflation is falling. We're like the balloon going... <laughs> and that's bad. They don't want that, okay? They want the balloon. To <laughs> balloon. Excuse you know, me. a balloon you get for your birthday. Like, your uncle gave you one that was squishy. No, no, no. You don't want a squishy balloon that's disinflating. You, you want a balloon that's properly inflated, but not too inflated, where you're like... Ooh, this this one, I think it's going to pop. No, you don't want that. You want a perfectly inflated balloon. You want balloon. it nice perfectly and tight. Just say it. Is 2 the Fed says they're going to allow inflation to run up potentially half, 2.5% before they start acting. And they usually act by raising interest rates to try to quell inflation. So here's the quick sparks notes on this. Spark notes. I keep saying that one. Inflation in the long term helps people who have debt and invest. So that means inflation helps people who are stockholders, company owners or investors, and real estate investors. That's usually the richer half of Americans. But this hurts people who are savers and people with credit card debt, aka the poorer half of Americans. So then you might think, okay, well, why don't we just have some deflation to help the poorer half? Well, that seems good at first, but it tends to depress an economy so badly through something called a deflationary spiral, where basically nobody wants to end up spending money, and the economy begins to collapse. This is why the Fed prefers to lean towards the inflation, which makes it seem like they lean much more towards helping the richer half. And let's just be real, they do. Like, everything the Fed does seems to just bail out the businesses and the richer people and the stock market and the bond market. But they admit that. And they say that their hands are tied, and the only ones that could really help us are Congress. However, this whole update is designed to show us how bad things could potentially be if Congress doesn't act. That is, if Congress doesn't act appropriately, we could be in that phase, that, that scenario three, which would be very, very bad. And so hopefully, we get really good action by Congress, which will put us at scenario one or two. But still, we can't kid ourselves, we're probably going to be dealing with this well through 2022. This is insane. Financial. Hopefully by then we have a vaccine. You know, if, if we're even willing to take it. Now, what about me? Aaron. What are my moves? 
Well, I want to keep this very simple as well. And uh, now, what I'm about to say might sound crazy in the short term because what I've what I love I've it. said. It's a feather. But hear this out. I'll keep it short. Number one, buy undervalued real estate. You're all probably tired of hearing this, so I'm not going to go crazy into detail on that. Buy wedge deals. So if you buy in a five hundred thousand dollar neighborhood, you buy four hundred thousand dollar house. It's easy. You can do it all day long. All right. Number two, keep buying my favorite stock. And I know that sounds crazy because they seem pretty high right now. Mostly, this is a mix of Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Redfin, Lemonade, Purple, Peloton, with a little bit of exposure to Dave and Buster's and the Simon Property Group. I also buy the stocks listed at uh, metkevin.com slash 1337v3. In fact, if you go to the description down below, you'll see all my stock portfolio. I will make sure to add. You kind of see buy, buy this on big red days, buy this when the stock market is red, and buy this to hold cash. You, you can look at those. Click those links down below. So why is this crazy? Well, if inflation kicks in, but real estate values and stock values get hurt in the short term, then it seems crazy to buy stocks and real estate now. And that's true, especially if we don't get a third, you know, if we face phase three or scenario three, we don't get Congress passing the proper stimulus. Yeah, then buying stocks and real estate would be stupid. However, I, I think in the long run, we're all expecting Congress to pass a solid stimulus package. And, and, and by solid, I don't mean generous. Certainly not. $1,200 was like a slap in the face with how long we've waited. Uh, especially for, well, for those who can qualify for the stimulus check. But here's what happens. Generally, if we see inflation in 2023, let's say, 2023, 2024, stocks and real estate are going to get hurt in the short term. However, both of those get helped by inflation in the longer term, especially if you have debt on them. You don't want to be over leveraged. You want to survive that potential inflation storm. But you tend to get through that better when there's some inflation. So stocks and real estate and those assets can be a hedge against inflation. Some people don't want to have anything to do with stocks and real estate because maybe they've lost trust in those systems. And I get that. And a lot of those folks will go instead to gold or cryptocurrency. I personally don't understand how to value cryptocurrencies. And I'm not going to tell you that I do. So I don't touch cryptos. Instead, I invest in things that I can value and that I think I can get for a discount. Anyway, good luck. Please subscribe. Stay safe out there. Get two free stocks with Weeble if you deposit $100 with the link down below. And of course, sign up for life insurance in as little as five minutes. Check out that YouTube course as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching and stopping by. I love it. It's, it's really cool. It's a feather and then it curls around just a little bit. I love it. Anyway, my hair is looking really good right now. Um, you guys enjoy your afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching. Uh, I want to do a couple reviews. So I'll see you later. Thanks. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye-bye.